Okay, Elliot, you're on the show. What do you want? Uh, 16. 16. Is dropping one? Yep. Oh, nice. Thank you. Uh, All right. Wait, wait, I So 16 says, oh, come on. Y equals cosine of x plus 3. Yeah. You told me to guess on this one. Yeah, because we, I mean, we have to estimate a lot that one. Yes is perhaps the wrong word. Hey, that's tough. I don't understand why you're asking me. That wasn't my Okay, uh, what is the x plus 3 in parentheses going to do to the graph? Move it 3 to the left because it's inside the parentheses. And so, really, a good way to do this is just to kind of cheat a little bit and uh, graph the original cosine function hoist. So you should be familiar with that. Starts at one, whoops, missed that, but you get the idea, right? So there's our original cosine function. And then if I shift this three to the left, what I was telling Taylor yesterday is three is really close to pi, right? So if this had a low point at pi, which is 3.14, and I move it 3 to the left, its low point is going to be, yeah, 0.1, you know, 141, yeah, basically zero, okay? Bless you. So that's going to be my low point right there, and then it's going to go up here just past the pi over 2. Uh, whoops, that's not the right thing. Okay. Why is it up to down down low? Oh, because the low point. Yeah. yeah, so the low point got shifted from being at pi to being basically at okay. zero. It looks like a D in Asia. It does look like a D in Asia. World famous double helix. Okay, then did you say 17 also? Yeah. Okay. All those graphics. 17 is the same thing. You just take this blue thing and move it up three. So you just move it up here somewhere and draw the same graph. And this one, instead of being at negative one, since it went up three, it'll be at two. And this one, high point, instead of being at one, it went up three, so it'll be at four. Okay. I don't really understand. Katie, Katie, Pope, Katie, Banana, Banana, Pope, Okay, I don't really understand where that's Because I thought it was supposed to be like this. For 16 or 17? Oh, okay. Since the 3 is inside the parentheses, it moves it to the left 3. Yeah. So I took this point, the low point right there, and moved it to the left 3. Okay? I took this place where it crossed the x-axis and moved it to the left 3. And then I took this high point and I moved it to the left 3. So I just took all those things and moved them to the left 3. And I kind of used pi as well, a size for that. About 26. Okay. 26. 27. 27. Easier than 27. Easier. Kenzie, don't talk so much. Yeah. Okay, 26. Uh, what's the period? What is the amplitude? Why is the period? Because there's a 1 in front of the x. Oh, okay. And 2 pi divided by 1 is 2 pi. So the amplitude is 2. Uh, but what's my range going to be? What? Negative 3 to 1. Because my amplitude of 2 means that it would normally be from negative 2 to 2. But the minus one means I'm going to shift that down one, so it's going to be from negative three to three. Oh. Okay. Uh, and then it is moved left. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Negative three to one. Yeah. Um, and then it's moved to the left pi over four, right? Okay. So that's all the information that we need. So now we are ready to graph it. Um, so like I did yesterday, since the range is negative 3 to 1, I'm going to go negative 3 here, 1 here, OK? 
and I'm going to draw in a horizontal dotted line there to show that my graph is going to bounce in between those two things. Okay? Where's the middle of my graph going to be? At what number? Negative 1, because negative 1 is halfway in between 1 and negative 3. So my middle of my graph is going to be right there, and that's not really drawn to scale, but you'll be, it is terrible actually, yeah. Um, okay, and then uh, it is moved pi over 4 to the left. So instead of starting at 0 like it normally does, it's going to start at negative pi over 4, right? Yeah, yeah. And then it's going to go up and down and up and down. Um, so if this is negative pi over 4 here where it started, then what would this high point right, be, right here be? Pi over 4. What would this be? Would it be pi over 2? Did I do that wrong? Let's get the regular one up here so we can know. So if this was a regular graph, it would look like this, right? And uh, the first peak of a sine function is at pi over 2, right? So if this got shifted over pi over 4 from there, that means the high point is going to be pi over 4. So we had that right. Where does the sine function cross the x-axis the first time? At pi. So that means this is going to be... No, because pi minus pi over 4 is 3 pi over 4. Then this low point of the regular sine function would normally be at 3 pi over 2, but I have to move it pi over 4 that way. So 3 pi over 2 is really 6 pi over 4 minus pi over 4 is 5 pi over 2. So that's going to be 5 pi over 2. This thing right so I did that wrong too. Okay, there's your graph. Are you good? Okay, well you do 27. Totally screwed that one up. What? No, do you have an issue? I'll do 27. Yeah. So wait, it starts at 3. So we're doing 27 now? You guys get the idea there, right? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. But this one's like high over oh, no, that's crazy. I don't, I don't like it. You're like, you always finish it the right way. Oh, okay. That's a good point. I agree with her. I agree with this her. This one's just pi right. over three, so it's just like a job that different. All right, let's try and do this one well. Let's do it. Just draw a line. Okay. okay. Um, so the period is two pi. The range is going to be what? Wait. It's normally negative 1 to 1, but it's moving up so 1, it's so it's 0 to 2. Um, if you take Mr. Helvey's pre-calculus class next year, you'll spend a lot of time working on these graphs. So just think of this as an introduction. What? Was it tangent graph you're working on? Tangent graph, you don't mess with it. What is that? Um, excuse me, we don't spend a lot of time doing this graph. This sounds garbage, that's why. It's not garbage, but... It's pretty close, isn't it? It's probably Whatever. Uh, we've got calculators for this. Uh, so the range is from 0 to 2. Okay, then it's been shifted pi over 3 to the left. So let's do this. Let's figure out what is the normal, what's the normal minimum of a sine function? If you look at a, if I have a little sine function right here that goes like that, Normally, the minimum yeah, happens at what? 3 pi over 2, right? So and now I'm shifting it pi over 3 to the left. Pi is 3 pi over 2. Because it always is. So if you don't know that, then you need to pay better attention. Okay. You need to pay better attention. So I have to go 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 3. My common thing is going to be 6. So this is going to be... Are you a zombie? 
So 9 pi over 6 minus 2 pi over 6 is 7 pi over 6. So that's where the minimum is going to happen. Okay. Uh, where is the maximum going to happen? It normally happens at pi over 2. And now we have to subtract pi over 3 from that. So pi over 2 minus pi over 3 uh, would be, anybody know? 1, 6, pi, good, pi over 6. So our new graph is going to have a maximum at pi over 6. And then the other thing we need to figure out is the uh, zeros. Uh, wait, is it? Well, that one was in pi. So this zero is at x equals 0. So I did, huh? Isn't it negative pi over 3? Right, so since it's going to normally be at 0, but we shift it to the left, it's negative pi over 3. This one is normally at pi, but we subtract pi over 3, so it'll be at 2 pi over 3, right? Because pi minus pi over 3 is 2 pi over 3. And then this one is at 2 pi minus pi over 3 would be... What's 2 pi with the with, if you make it uh, over 3? 2 pi is the same as how many pi is over 3? 6 pi over 3. So 6 pi over 3 minus pi over 3 is 5 pi over 3. So there's all of the information that we need. Let's try and do this graph and see if we can do it. That's what we're doing right now. Why are you talking smack about it? I'm just saying it's not doable. Okay, so first of all, since my range is from 0 to 2, I'm going to put a dotted line up here at 2. That's going to be my high point. And then my middle ground is uh, 1, right? Yeah. Okay, we got her now. We and got her now. Now when I put down. in my uh, stuff here, I'm going to go negative pi over 3. And then I have to go pi over 6. This is going to be where my maximum is. And then there's going to be another 0 at 2 pi over 3. And then there's going to be a minimum at 7 pi over 6. And then another 0 at 5 pi over 3. Okay, so we got it. Okay, now let's draw it. So let's draw it. So it starts right here. So 2 pi over 6. Then it's got a uh, maximum at pi over 6. What? So it's got a 0 at 2 pi over 3. So minimum there. And another zero there. Okay, wait, wait. Okay, so we got. Sorry about the sloppiness on the last one. I got this. I got the 26 by myself, so you can't. So you can't. All right, what's next? 30. Uh, 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. Were those the last two? Yeah, it graphic works graphic for me. Anything else? We did 17, I thought. We did. Kind of. We just take the cosine graph and move it up three. Did you say skip 30 and 30? Yeah, we skipped 30. Okay, pass those forward. So it says 30 was the easy.